Hello, I'm John Adams, editor of Digital Photo, and welcome to this video lesson where we're going on a rescue mission. Direct sunlight on a scene gives high contrast results with bright highlights and deep shadows. And while this can be perfect for some pictures, it can also cause the complete destruction of others. This shot taken in the village of Ilam in the Peak District is a good case in point. We've got a lovely church elegantly framed by the flat-topped pyramid of Thorpe Cloud. That's the mountain in the background. But the harsh contrast has not only washed out the sky completely, it's also cut the subject in two with a nasty shadow straight through the front. Now you may think that this picture has had it and is only fit for the bin. But if we think in black and white rather than colour, we can do some work in Photoshop to rebalance the lighting and contrast and rescue the picture. The reason a black and white version can save the shot is because you can push the tones much harder in mono than you can in colour, and that means we can effectively recreate the lighting on the scene. To do this will take some work, and we're going to use selections, layers, adjustment layers, layer masks, and the dodge and burn tools to make it happen. This makes the technique like a mini Photoshop course in itself, but follow along and you'll see that everything is quite straightforward. You don't even need all the bells and whistles of the full version of Photoshop to do it. And to prove this, I'm going to use elements to run through this entire technique. So that's the image we're going to try and create from our starting point. But I'm of course going to start from scratch, so I'll close this one down. And we'll start from our original JPEG, which you'll find in the Start Images folder. It's called church.jpg. So with Elements or Photoshop loaded and up on screen, go up to File and down to Open, and then find the Church image from the Start Images folder. Double click on that and it'll load up on screen. Now, because we'll be using layers, we need to get our layers panel up on screen. So if yours isn't already down the right hand side, just pop up to window and choose layers from the list. There's our layers panel. Now, because we're going to go into black and white, that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to change it to black and white. So to do that, click on the adjustment layer icon in the layers panel. That's this one here. Click on that and select hue saturation from the drop down list. Now in the Hue Sat palette, all you need to do is grab hold of the saturation slider and pull it all the way to the left. That strips out all the colour and gives you a very basic, simple black and white conversion. So we can close that palette down now, and the next thing we've got to do is make a selection. Now we want the dark part of the image, the part that's kind of in obscurity here on the front of the church. So to do that we're going to use the lasso tool, so select that from the toolbox. If you've got the wrong lasso showing, you'll find you can pick the right one by either holding on this icon and choosing it from the flyout menu in the full version of Photoshop, or you can use the tool options bar in Elements, which you'll find down at the bottom of the screen. So we've got three lassos to choose from, and we want the uh, regular freehand lasso there. With this selected, what we're going to do is make a selection around this bottom part of the image. So we want the dark bits, basically, so I'll start over here, and I'm just going to select around, get in this part of the building, that bit there. Then I'm going to follow the shadow right through the clock down here, and then we want to go up there, taking this little bit here. I'll make this is only a rough selection, really. It doesn't have to be super accurate, because we can tidy it up in a minute. But they're the kind of bits I need in the image. And then down to the side of the church, and then along the front, something like that. And I think that should do the trick. So we've made our selection here, and you can see that it's surrounded by the dotted lines called marching ants. Now we've fenced off this part of the image, but what we need to do is soften the edge of it so it blends in more naturally with the rest of the picture. So to do that, we're going to use the Refine Edge command. And you can get to that in the Tool Options bar by clicking on Refine Edge, down at the bottom in Elements, up at the top in Photoshop. Click on that, and you'll get this dialog box, and the only slider we're interested in is the Feather slider. So grab hold of that and take that up to about 60 pixels or so. And you'll see, depending on the view mode you have, you'll see the edge soften. Click OK, and we've got a nice soft edge now on that selection. What we're now going to do is create another adjustment layer. Last time we did it with hue saturation. This time we're going to click on the adjustment layer icon, and we're going to choose Levels from the list. This brings up our Levels palette, and here we've got three important sliders that cover the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights in the picture. And what we're going to do is mix these up to get this part of the image looking roughly balanced with the rest of it. So to do that, we'll just start playing with the sliders, and we'll start with the highlights. I'm going to move those in to try and brighten the whole thing up. And they're coming in. Oh, I'm going to set those to about, oh, I don't know, 
somewhere in the 140s, 144, something like that. And then we'll balance up our shadows, we'll move that in. I should think something around there should be okay. I've got about 29 in the shadows. Now the midtones, the all important midtones, this affects the overall exposure in the image. And I need to pull these to the left to brighten everything up. So let's see what we get. I think about sort of about 2.7 something like that that looks okay there now it looks very gray and murky but don't worry all we're looking for is a tonal balance at this stage so that should do me for now so i'll just close down that levels palette for the time being there's our adjustment layer made and you can see there the area we've affected is the white area and the area we've left alone, the unselected part of the image, is the black area. And that's all here in this layer mask. We can use that to actually refine our selection and just tidy up any parts where we've gone over the edge. I can see a couple of bits. There's a bit down there that looks a bit too bright. So all I'm going to do is grab hold of the brush tool. I'm going to make sure I've got a black brush selected. And you can do that by hitting D and then X on the keyboard. That gives us a black brush. Then I'm going to take the brush size down by hitting the left square brackets key. That takes it down about that sort of size there, around about 200 pixels. And then the opacity, I want to set that to about 40%. I can either move the slider or I can do that really quickly by hitting 4 on the numeric keypad on the keyboard. Now all we're going to do is just paint. We're painting into the mask now rather than the lay. See this mask here? We're painting a bit of black in there. That just tidies up any parts where we've kind of gone over the edge or made things a bit too bright. Let's just take down that bit there. And that's that's not looking too bad, actually. I'm going to drop it down to about 20% now by hitting 2 and just take out these slightly bright areas here as well. And that just evens up the tones. That's the kind of thing. That's enough for now. And what I'm now going to do is select this part of the church. You can see this is slightly darker in tone than the rest of it. So again, I'm looking for just a neutral flat finish at the moment. So I'm going to grab the lasso tool once more. And I'm just going to make a selection, just a rough one, around this area here. We've already done it once, but I'm doing it again just to try and get, get the shadow area nicely selected and evened up compared to the rest of the picture. Now I've got that area selected, I need to refine the edge again by feathering it, so refine edge, and I'll go for about the same amount of feathering, I'll just click in the box this time, and I'm just going to type in 60 and press enter. So we've got a feathered edge around the part we've just selected, and I'm going to do the same thing in the layers panel, I'm just going to make another adjustment layer and adjust this bit too. So we click on the adjustment layer icon and I'll choose levels once more. Now this time I'm happy with my shadows at the moment, I don't need to make that any darker because we want to brighten this up slightly, but I will need a bit of mid-tone and highlight adjustment. I'll start with the highlights again, I'll just drag those in a touch just to brighten up the whole thing. I think that's sort of about right there, I've got 221, though of course the numbers aren't critical, it depends entirely on your image. Then the mid-tones, I want to move those to the left too, and that looks about right there, about sort of 1.2, something around that area. So that's now evened up my tones, I can close that down, and we have an image that looks rather flat. We have repaired the contrast difference, but we don't now really have any contrast. So what we need to do is add some, and we're going to do that by painting it on using the dodge and burn tools. But before we begin that process, we've got to make sure we've got kind of a flattened layer, because we can't dodge onto a layer mask. So what we need to do is crunch all the work we've done so far down into a new layer. And there's a great keyboard shortcut for that, which allows you to merge all the visible layers into a new layer. Make sure you've got your top layer selected and active. And then all we have to do is hit Control, Alt, Shift, and E. And that makes us a new layer all ready for our dodging and burning work. Now we're going to start with the burn tool. So we uh, click on this icon here. This is the dodge and the burn tool. They're shared. But if you look in the tool options bar, you can select the burn tool, the sponge tool, or the dodge tool. We won't be using the sponge. That's used for color images. We will, in fact, be using the burn tool. So select the icon that looks like a hand. And then what we're going to do is set range to shadows. And we're going to set our exposure to a really low value. At default, if you've never used these tools before, they'll be set to 50%, which is way too high. So we're going to bring them down. And I'm going to use the burn tool, first of all, at about 10%. So shadows in range, 10% in exposure, brush size, um, that looks okay for now, 250 pixels should be fine. If you want to vary that, you can of course use the square brackets keys. And we're going to start playing the burn tool over this stonework here. And what this is doing is making the darker parts darker still. 
and it will only affect the darkest parts of the image. We're not going to affect the midtones or the highlights when we use it this way because we've got our range set to shadows only. So we've got to just uh, drag it and play it over the stonework here and that will bring out the texture in the darker parts of that stonework and it will thicken up the windows as well and we can play it over this part as well just all the time adding a little more depth and drama to the darkest parts of the scene and that's working quite nicely I'll thicken those windows and I think I might well run along this foreground too because that's looking a little bit washed out and pale. I'll give myself some dark grass that will hem in the image nicely at the bottom and make the most of these shadows streaking across the land. That's the sort of thing there. I can actually go into the, the mountains in the background as well. I can thicken up that shadow, make that look a bit darker and more dramatic, and a bit of this ridge here. And we'll take that tree down too. You can see all the time we're just darkening the darkest tones. So we're not really affecting anything else in the picture. Let's get that nice and black in there. That's the kind of thing. Now you can spend a bit more time than me doing this. You can go in really detailed. You can zoom in and use the burn tool on very small areas and pick out outlines and particular textures. But I'm just using it with quite a broad brush at the moment because it's going to be a bit quicker for you to watch. So that's my burning done. I don't think I need to do anything else there. Now I've done some burning, I'm going to swap to the midtones. So I'm still using the burn tool, but this time I'm going to set range to midtones. And again, I'll try about 10% in exposure. And I'm going to increase brush size just a touch. I'm going to go up to about sort of 400 pixels. And I'll just work into this hill in the background, into Thorpe Cloud. I'm just going to darken down that gray tone at the moment. Just give it a bit more depth and character and it also make it appear a little bit nearer to the church. That's the kind of thing. A bit of work on this ridge as well. And a bit more work into the stonework as well. There we go, perhaps a little bit here and a little bit over there. That's just darkening those areas. Okay, so that's my burning out of the way. I now need to do some dodging. Now you can do it on the same layer or it's a good idea really to make a separate layer for your dodging work. Then you can check your progress as you go along. So I'm just going to hit Ctrl and J to create a new layer and all that does is copy what we've done so far into a new layer at the top. So these two are exactly the same. If we switch that one off you won't see any difference. But I'm going to do some dodging on this layer and keep my dodging and burning separated. So we need our dodge tool so we'll select that from the tool options bar. And we need the range to be set this time to highlights because we only want to dodge the brightest areas in the scene. Now brush size looks okay at about 250 pixels so set it to round about there and for exposure you want a nice low value for dodging about 5% should be ideal. And now we start playing into that stonework again and this time we're just going to accentuate the very brightest tones and this will bring out the texture in all that stone. There we go and you can see that really starting to work. And it's easy to overdo dodging and burning, so that's why I've made these separate layers. If we switch them off a second, you can see there, that's where we started from. And that's what our burning did. Look at that. It's a huge difference between the two in terms of contrast. And then dodging, we can see what we're doing there. You can see things brightening up. As we uh, dodge away, you don't often notice how much work you're doing when you're actually doing it because it's a very subtle process using a low exposure value. But you do if you switch it on and off, and that's why there's a benefit of having those separate layers to do it on. OK, I'll just carry on now, do a bit more dodging, bring out some texture in these trees, maybe make those stones kind of pick out a bit more, a bit of brightness, and we'll go into this area here too, just to get the whites a bit whiter and all that texture coming through in the stonework. Now you can see it's a little bit blotchy here and there, but I think that's rather nice in, uh, in black and white. It adds a certain kind of weathered look. So that's pretty good. We'll do a little bit in the hillside as well. There's some light patches of limestone on the hillside. We'll bring those up. And I think we're just about there. Yep, I think that's enough really. So I'll just check my dodging and burning, switch them off again. There's the burning there's the dodging and you can see that's really brought out the texture and helped smooth out the join between those two very different exposure levels that we started with back on the original color image now what about that sky well there isn't one we can't use a levels adjustment layer on this because there's no detail to work with so when you have no detail in a sky there's nothing you can do to restore detail there's nothing to work with so instead we have to use a bit of artistic license and it makes sense just to create a new sky and I'm gonna do that on a new layer 
So over in the Layers panel, click on the Create a New Layer icon, that's this one here, click on that and we get a new blank layer right at the top of the stack. Now I'm going to grab the Rectangular Marquee tool and I'm just going to make a selection in the sky, something like that. Then I'm just going to reset my colours. I need black and white, so I'll hit D on the keyboard. That gives me a black foreground and a white background colour. And all I'm going to do is go to Filter, Render, and choose Clouds. And that gives me a nice little cloud pattern, a nice mottled pattern in the middle of my sky. And the reason I've made it small is because that particular pattern wouldn't look realistic across this vast expanse of sky. So I've made it small, put it in a small box, so we can stretch it out and make it look better. And to stretch it out, all we've got to do is hit Ctrl and T to go into free transform mode. Then we can simply grab hold of these handles, drag it across, and make that little sky selection fit the whole frame. So we'll go across like that, and then we'll pull it down to make sure we're covering the entire sky, and we'll pull it up as well. Now that still isn't going to look too realistic because we need to get a bit of perspective distortion on that digital sky to make it look more real. So I'm just going to hit Control and Zero first and foremost, and then I'm going to hit Control and Minus a few times, just to create some room around the canvas. What I can now do is use the Perspective mode of Transform to pull out these handles. And to get the Perspective mode, the quickest way is to hold down Control and Alt and Shift, and then pull out one of the corner handles, and it will stretch out and make it look much more like a real sky. Once you've stretched it, let go of the mouse, then let go of the keys, and then double-click inside this bounding box, or click the green tick, or hit return. Any of those three ways will set down the changes you've made and give you that stretched digital sky across your picture. Now we'll need to hit Control and D to get rid of the marching ants, and then we need to blend this sky in with the rest of our picture. And to do that, we're first of all going to change the blending mode. So go over to the Layers panel, and we need to click where it says Normal, and choose Multiply from the list. That blends our sky with the picture. What we now need to do is remove the sky from the parts that overlap. And that's easy to achieve using a layer mask. We've used layer masks before. They're these little things here attached to our adjustment layers. But this time, we're going to use one on a pixel layer. That's our sky. And to do it, we just click on this icon here, the Add Layer Mask icon. Click on that, and you get this white rectangle. Now, white means there's no changes being made. So what we have to do is paint black. And you can see we've got black selected as a foreground color. If you don't have black there, make sure you've got the brush tool first of all, then hit D, and then X, and you'll have black as your foreground. Now, we're going to paint black into this layer mask, so we can see the mask is selected there. Don't be on the layer itself, be on the mask, and you'll see there's that little outline around it to make sure that the mask is active rather than the layer. So we've got our mask, and then we're going to start painting into this layer mask. So we'll set our brush size, we'll go for about sort of 250 pixels, and opacity, we'll start with about 40%. So hit 4 on the keyboard, and you'll get a 40% opacity. We've got to get rid of this hard line, so we'll just start painting into the mask. That's got rid of the line there, and then we need to just work away to make sure our mountains and the tower of our church appear nice and naturally in the blend. Now, quite a good way to do this is make a, a rough pass first and foremost, like so. And then what we can do is go for a nice big brush. So I'll increase brush size to about 600 pixels. And then we reduce opacity even more, take it down to about 20% by hitting 2 on the keyboard. And then we can just make a few sweeps across to get a nice blended join between the two. We get a nice sort of bright halo around the skyline, which can look quite attractive and quite realistic at the same time. And that's the kind of thing. That's got our sky detail looking good. If you make a mistake with your masking, you can change it. Remember, we're just painting black and white into a mask. So if you've gone too far and you don't like the, uh, the kind of bright halo you've created, just hit X to swap to the other color. So we're now painting with white. And then you can paint that back in again and have another try. So if we want to have another pass, we can do it. We've now repaired the damage we've caused. Then we hit X again to go back to black. Then we can just paint through until we get a really nice seamless job that looks like a natural blend. And now I'll just double click the hand tool to get us up full screen. And there we have it. If you look at where we started from, if I switch off all these layers, we can go back to our starting point, and there's our original color image with its rather obvious contrast problem. We've got half of our subject in total obscurity, all living in the shade there.
And what we've done, we've first turned it to black and white by using a hue saturation adjustment layer. And then we perked up this dark shaded part here by using a levels adjustment layer. We then made another adjustment layer to this area here. And then we crunched all our layers together and did some burning just to restore some contrast and give the image some bite and presence. Once we'd done that, we did some dodging on a separate layer. And because we had a completely washed out sky, we created a new one using the clouds filter and slapped it in place using a layer mask. And I think our final result looks much better than the one we started with. And it just goes to show how you can really rescue a picture by using black and white and relighting the scene using a variety of contrast changes made with levels adjustment layers and dodging and burning techniques. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Give it a try. The start image called church.jpg is in the start images folder. And once you've made it work with this picture, have a look at your own images and see if there's some that you can rescue with a mono relighting technique. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.